Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm Subhajit Basu. I'm from School of Law, University of Leeds. I'm here with my colleague, uh, Gavin, Dr. Gavin Davidson from Queen's University, Belfast. Um, the, this presentation is based on a report we reproduced at the behest of uh, Commissioner of Older People in June 2015. The project was laid by two of my other colleagues also, or involved with two of my other colleagues, Joe Duffy and Professor Catherine uh, Pier Pearson. Now, um, the way we're going to do this presentation, I'm going to take you through a bit of the background, why we did this report, what was the need behind uh, producing this report, um, and then a bit about our research objectives. And then uh, Gavin will, uh, will take you through our, some of our findings, particularly um, our recommendations and our principal uh, recommendation in this, in this regard. Now, as a lawyer, I, I, I really get uh, a, an audience where people think that law has got a, um, a, a positive role in society. But this was one of those projects where I, re I found that law can have a positive role in the society because a law which involves adult care in, in Northern Ireland um, dates back over 40, 40 years. But we all know that... Uh, technological advancements and particularly changes in our lifestyles within the society have continued to evolve in these 40 years. Um, unfortunately or un unfortunately, uh, the law and policy around adult social care has not moved at the same, same pace during this time. If you look at the current legislative framework or the regulatory framework uh, around adult social care in Northern Ireland, um, you would see that there are a number of legislation, uh, seven to be precise, which dates back to 1978. Some of the terminologies uh, used in these legislations um, and, and definitions are outdated, they're unhelpful, but particularly they cause a number, uh, cause confusions. Uh, more at a practical level, we found that many older people, their families, their carers uh, do not even know what they are entitled to under the present law and policy framework in Northern Ireland. Legal system uh, for adult social care in Northern Ireland, as we found, is complex, it is fragmented, and our findings was very similar to what Law Commission found in 2011 in the context of adult social care in England. It goes without saying that the current legislation and the policy for adult social care is in the need for reform. Ultimately, our aim is to provide people with necessary information so that they can make informed choices about their future. Hence, we were tasked by the Commissioner of Older People um, to review the current position in terms of law and policy in Northern Ireland and compare our findings with international good practice. Ultimately, we were asked to develop a set of recommendations on how best it would be to reform adult social care for the future in Northern Ireland. Our report was published in June 2015 by the Commissioner of Older, Older People. There's one more thing to be said here. Northern Ireland already has an integrated care system which is something which England is aspiring to, but it has yet to realize its full benefit of an integrated health and social care system due to lack of coherent policies that promote and support integrated care. What we found and what we realized that the structural integration of health and social care into a single service which occurred more than 40 years ago happened because of concerns about the ability of local authorities to provide the social care and health care rather than concern over the fragmentation of the care. To put it differently, it was more of an administrative need to provide a bit more administrative efficiency rather than it was about care. So these are our, our research objectives. The first one, we were tasked to identify the gaps 
and the issues in the current legislative framework. We were to compare the existing law and the practice in Northern Ireland with law and rest practice in other jurisdictions. Uh, we would recommend changes or identify options for current Northern Ireland framework and participate in a roundtable event with stakeholders to discuss outcomes and recommendation. Our report is based on review of adult social care in local, national and international context. As Gavin will go through you a little bit later, we chose 16 different jurisdictions and we deliberately chose 16 different jurisdictions as we wanted to look at countries with different systems of welfare provisions, countries with different economic conditions. We wanted to make sure that while we are proposing our recommendations for Northern Ireland, we only propose those best practices from these countries that we thought would work. And also learn the implementation challenges uh, those countries faced. So we looked into law and policy developments in regions surrounding Northern Ireland, England, Scotland, Welsh, Republic of Ireland. We also looked at Scandinavian countries such as Denmark and Sweden, who are well known for their enlightened social policies. Thanks about it, uh, and uh, thanks uh, also to Leslie Ann and Eileen for the opportunity to uh, present uh, the seminar series. It's a brilliant thing. It's brilliant to see it um, continuing to develop. Uh, so as uh, Sapatchit's so, so mentioned, we looked at the literature across a number of different countries. The methodology for doing that was what's uh, called a rapid evidence re review, which some of you might be f familiar with. It's a relatively structured way of trying to assess quite quickly uh, a lot of information to try and inform uh, policy and uh, legal and ser service developments. Um, the idea was to uh, try and identify uh, best practice from around the world to inform recommendations for how adult social care uh, could uh, develop in Northern Ireland. Um, our key recommendations, um, there were three main recommendations that uh, Northern Ireland should have a single legislative framework uh, for adult social care with accompanying guidance for implementation. And there was some suggestion, Joe Duffy, uh, who's our, our colleague at Queen's, who led the project, also has responsibility for uh, teaching law to uh, our social work students. So there's some suggestion he had a vested interest in making uh, adult social care law a bit uh, more accessible because it is extraordinarily, as uh, Sebastian has said, co complex for people using services. I think it's very difficult to access. Uh, so Catherine Hewitt, who we work closely with on this project, is a, a lawyer and even from that perspective, so somebody with that level of expertise who uh, is uh, really interested in the area, it's still a complex area. Um, so uh, our second recommendation, which we'll focus on today, was that um, uh, all older people in Northern Ireland, once they reach the age of 75, uh, should be offered um, a support visit, a preventive visit. Um, by an appropriately trained professional um, and we'll focus a bit on that uh, more later, later on. The third uh, area which I suppose is an issue which is being um, considered and debated internationally as well is that um, in the context of increasing demands for health and social care we need to have a very open debate about um, how those uh, arrangements should be funded. There does seem to be a willingness as part of the current um, election process. There are various um, polls which suggest that people are willing to um, pay more for certain things and social care is, is one of them, um, although that's not how uh, it's set up at the, at the minute, but that obviously needs to be the subject of debate. So we're going to focus on this, the second recommendation uh, now, which is looking at the, uh, the idea of a preventive visit. This was uh, a t type of service which has been developed in a number of different com uh, countries, but perhaps most comprehensively in Denmark. Uh, it was introduced in 1998 in, in, that, in that country, and uh, it's centrally aimed at promoting well-being and independence uh, of older people uh, at 75 and preventing um, hospital uh, and or sort of nursing care admissions. The visit, visit is usually undertaken by community um, uh, health staff, uh, and it's really focused on developing per personal resources and offering support. 
Um, so and in general, uh, the presentations this afternoon are about the uh, need to sort of shift left, I suppose, so on prevention, uh, promotion and early intervention. And when it was introduced in Denmark, it was initially two visits a year. Uh, there are 98 municipalities in Denmark, so they were, each municipality was allowed to develop how they would do that in terms of the content, uh, who would do it, and, and, and so on. Um, last year, since uh, uh, 2016, that's been reduced to one visit at 75, and flexibility for the municipalities between the ages of 75 and 80, and then an annual visit um, after, after that. In terms of the research for how effective uh, this type of universal uh, uh, um, pre uh, preventive visit is, uh, there have been some meta-analyses for those if you who are uh, not so uh, research-minded. Those are just attempts to bring together the results from a number of different studies um, to try and get an overview of the effectiveness. So uh, there have been a, a couple of meta-analyses of uh, randomized control trials, um, which if effectively allow you to compare the uh, impact of just the preventive visit and suggest that uh, they do enable people to live longer, uh, to function better, and it reduces some of uh, admissions to uh, care settings and to hospital settings. Uh, not everybody wants these. They're obviously they're offered to everyone, but only about two thirds of people in engage with the visit. Uh, and there's ongoing research in uh, other countries, particularly um, Sweden and Norway, uh, and the, uh, the states ab about um, the different ways that this type of service can be offered. So f um, frequency, who does it, the content, and so on. Um, in terms of the visit itself, it's it's interesting. I, I suppose uh, it's not the focus isn't predominantly in, on health. Um, health is is part of it. Um, it's interesting the way that the Danish literature talks about it. They talk about the content of the visit, uh, but they also talk about the atmosphere uh, in in which how it's offered. So there is something about uh, that communication uh, to older people that the state of the services. Are interested in them and that the expectation is that they will be in, engaging in a whole range of issues so uh, the visit could uh, provide information in general about s services but also asking people about relationships uh, to develop sort of uh, social capital perhaps or also address uh, loneliness think about networking um, to think about social well-being about finances and um, suppose we're just talking about the context of the uh, the Mental Capacity Act could also be encouraging people to think about that, to think about uh, advanced care planning, to make decisions about what they would like in the future, to identify someone they might want to be involved in those and so, and so on. Um, there is also available to uh, people aged 75 and over currently um, an annual uh, checkup in primary care, uh, but that isn't offered to everyone. It's um, left to people to uh, request that if they wish. So this wouldn't in any way replace that. It might sign pe post people to that and alert people that that's available, um, but it, it wouldn't uh, replace that. So the recommendation really is, again, as we said, that all older people at the age of 75 receive a visit from an appropriately trained professional. Uh, the idea is that um, as all of the presentations uh, in this seminar are talking about, it provides an opportunity to identify and assess need at, the, at an earlier point uh, and so allow more effective intervention if it's, if it's needed. It's the recommendation is based on the principles of choice, partnership and control. And the first recommendation also suggests that a consolidating uh, act which would bring the current legislation together would be principles based, so you would have those Im uh, embedded within the legislation. We think this fits beautifully with the uh, current SERP policy direction in Northern Ireland, uh, um, especially transforming your care and uh, delivering together. Uh, so what we're suggesting is that um, uh, one trust at, at least uh, should um, pilot this. We could set it up as a randomised control trial to see if in this jurisdiction uh, it, it uh, replicates the effectiveness that have been found in uh, Denmark and, and other countries. Um, so also just to mention the Commissioner for Older People, Eddie, Eddie Lynch, is, is here and is su supportive of, the, of these uh, re recommendations so, uh, and is leading really on the debate ar around these issues. So it's th th thanks to the uh, Commissioner for Older People also for uh, facilitating the research. Okay. Thanks a lot.